Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have another brand new set of crazy revenge stories for you. But before we begin, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Tudor maliciously targeted students, so I collected an army and took him down. I'm not one for revenge personally, but this is something that happened to me in college, UK college. And it's something me and my friends love to reminisce over from time to time. A little background. I originally went to college intending to do math and physics, but due to multiple factors didn't get the grades, so I jumped into IT instead as the course didn't need grades as high and there was a need for IT techs in the market. The class I ended up in had about five of us that honestly didn't need to be there. We were your ultra computer nerds and pretty much could answer every question from day one. Some tutors saw this and used us to help the other students who came to class not knowing jack about computers. Then there was malicious tutor. Our class was rather rowdy, lots of male teens. Most of them were there because, well, they didn't know what they wanted to do in life, and this gave them some grades for university or something. Most of them continued on to other college courses, then went to uni after. So on to the actual story. Me and my small group of friends often sat at the front of the class, chatting while we worked and generally liked to have a joke or two. But we did our work. Things started out with malicious tutor telling us in the middle of class we needed to stop talking and get on with our work. Okay, so we were mostly joking then, so sure, maybe we were distracting him. But as time went on, he would start to snap at us for talking about the work, moving to help each other with stuff we'd already done or knew more about, etc. The time that took the biscuit was about halfway through the first year when on a day we were going to do our assignments, which were due the next day, something most of our tutors let us do in class if we had all our other work done, and the two of the group that knew the least needed some help finishing off their stuff. Most of us were working on other classes' work, the main lecture had been done, and the other people in the class were not passing that assignment first time as none of them were working on it even though the tutor had said, Use this time to get it in. I don't want any late assignments. They were instead laughing, joking, generally effing around, and playing games at the other side of the room where he couldn't see their computer screens. Malicious Tutor turns to us and rather angrily, and only to our small group, demands that we shut up, sit at our own desks, and stop distracting him. We had been distracting him every lesson and were problem students. He wouldn't listen to any of us about us helping each other or anything else, wouldn't give the two that needed the help the help, and being nerdy, anxious teens, none of us wanted to risk a fail or anything for all the work if we just walked out. So we complied. After the class, we got to talking. One of the people in our group, who we referred to as Griff in college, had done another course before this one and had many more tales of malicious tutor, from losing assignments to straight up refusing to help students, with one occasion breaking some code in a software assignment, then just shrugging and saying, to know, sorry, and leaving the student to fix it. It was here that I decided to hatch a plan, a plan that snowballed far quicker than I expected. That night, I jumped on Skype, the VoIP of the time, hit up Griff, and started writing down everything that had been happening. The seemingly innocuous harassment, the lack of assistance, the losing of assignments over the years, the specific targeting and ignorance of other people doing exactly what he was complaining about, everything we could get our hands on. I then spent the next few days going around with a handcrafted letter to everyone that I knew had been affected and although everyone thought it might get him spoken to but nothing more, still signed it to say they agree with what was written and that they can corroborate it. I then sent the letter straight up the ladder, not to his supervisor or manager or boss, but his boss's boss. This bit wasn't intentional, but it made it snowball, and although I'd planned out a whole bunch of stuff to give evidence of his actions, I didn't need any of it. Within a few hours of depositing the letter, I was pulled from my class by the head of the department who was assuring me that I wasn't in trouble and all the usual stuff. I was taken straight to her boss's boss who said something along the lines of, OP, because of how you've approached this complaint, we've got to take it very seriously. Did all the people who signed this read it? Yes, tutors, managers, bosses, boss, they did. And I believe other people have made complaints in the past too. Okay, OP. If you want, we can omit any names and this can be dealt with as an anonymous complaint, but that's up to you. I'm fine with my name being used, but I can't say for anyone else who signed the letter. 
Thank you, OP. If we need anything else from you, I'll be in touch. I can't say for certain, but I'm sure he then called in every other person on the letter and all of them asked to stay anonymous. By the next week, the tutor had disappeared and no one knew why or where he'd gone. Even his colleagues didn't know exactly what had happened, only that he'd left. We didn't see him again that year. The head of the department was also changed, I'm assuming because she hadn't dealt with the complaints properly, but she just got a demotion. She was a good tutor. The next year, I was standing near the room my next lecture was in, and malicious tutor walks down the corridor, makes a point to stop in front of me, shake my hand, ask how my studies are going, and tell me if I ever need anything, I can come straight to him. Kinda creepy, and he never did it to any other students. I was never put in any of his classes again, even though he did lectures on my subjects. I found out before I finished my last year that he'd been put on leave, made to attend a training program, and hit with the good old last chances warning, probably with attend this program or you're fired. Moral of the story, the pen is mightier than the MT's bork. And our next story. Boss mistreats new guys, so new guys get boss demoted, then fired. So back in my 20s, I worked for a large national sewer and drain company called Rotorooter. A great job, a great place to work, and I was lucky enough to be trained by some of the most skilled technicians in the industry. There was, however, one supervisor, let's call him Billy. Now, Billy was your typical kiss-up, who spent most of his time trying to please anyone who he thought held any influence, the senior techs, or power, the branch or regional manager, and loved to lord his power. He made the shift schedules and scheduled time off over anyone who he thought he could push around. A typical interaction with one of the big earners, this is a commission job, would be something like, hey, you need a day off? Sure, just let me know when and I'll be happy to help you. While if he was dealing with a new hire or low earner, you were lucky if he'd pick up the phone or take a second to hear you out. So one night around my third month on the job, I was sent to a mortuary to do some work. And while it was gross, hazard jobs like that paid really well, maybe $200 in your pocket for an hour's work. When it was done, I called him and told him I was taking the rest of the night off due to some chemicals in their sewer making me feel a little woozy, and I didn't think it'd be safe for me to operate heavy machinery. He flipped out and told me that if I didn't get back on the road, I would have a disciplinary hearing the next day, to which I said, sure, can't wait to see you there. As soon as I walked in, I requested someone from HR be present, as well as our assigned safety officer. The safety officer position in the company is very important, as the company self-insures and any safety violation can get you fired on the spot. I let Billy go first, and he says, You can't leave whenever you want from your shift. You're getting a warning, and next time I'm going to fire you. I calmly reach into my bag and pull out our employee handbook and began to read. Well, I don't remember the exact phrasing, it goes something like this. If you feel at any time that the situation or job you are in or on is dangerous or may lead to a dangerous situation, you are to stop immediately. There was another section about being inebriated, exposed to methane gas from the sewer, being lightheaded, etc., and how you should go home and not operate any equipment under those conditions. It even went so far as to say that transportation would be paid for by the company if you didn't feel safe driving. They were very big on safety since any insurance claims would be paid by them directly. I asked the safety manager if I did anything wrong and he supported me 100%. Then I asked HR what they thought and they said, if it's a safety issue, you go home and don't worry about your shift. At this point, the regional manager asked me to leave the office and I hear him rip into Billy like a fat kid into cake. That should have been enough for me, but I'm petty. I never forgive and I'm very patient. As time goes on, I become one of the top earners in my city, get Rookie of the Year my first year, and Salesman of the Year my second. Billy gets a reputation of being lazy and irresponsible. My second year at the company, Billy's put on probation, and this is where I go into pro-revenge mode. I gather up all the new guys and some of my buddies from my shift, and I organize them so at least once or twice a week, someone goes in there to complain about Billy. We never lied, we just knew what buttons to push to get him to self-destruct. New guys would ask for a day off, or someone would take a sick day during a busy shift, etc. Finally, the branch manager snaps and calls Billy into his office. He demotes him to salesman and puts him on my shift. At a company like this, the shifts become very close. We all talk in our trucks through our radios while waiting for jobs, and we all help each other when needed. During Billy's first few weeks on the road, our supervisor makes sure he gets all the fun jobs. Flooded basements, tight spaces, 
and generally anything that will get him absolutely covered in poop. And of course, as all this was happening, I had every single person I was friends with at the company call him and ask him for scheduling changes, so he had to explain to about 30 people how he was demoted and no longer a manager. Eventually, Billy broke. He started crying to the dispatcher about how he couldn't take it anymore and quit. The next day, me and two other guys threw a Billy's Gone party with cake and pizza at a neighborhood bar. We put up signs in the office and made a general announcement in the morning when we went in to hand in paperwork when we knew Billy would be there to give his two-week notice. He actually came up to us to thank us, and I got the pleasure of informing him that he's not invited. It's not a going-away party. It's a you're gone party. It wouldn't make sense for you to be at a party where we're celebrating you not being around anymore. In the end, only about 20 of the 50 employees at the branch showed up, but it was still a great party. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.